Just, okay, let me do it again. <laughs> All right, you ready? All the artists that I work with brought me on different journeys. Journeys that um, are like chapters in a book. And I learned something from each one of those journeys. You know what I'm saying? So none of them for me were, were tumultuous. I, I, I was homeless when I was managing the producers organized noise and outcasts and escape all at the same time. I was sleeping on somebody's floor. I was going through the cushions trying to find change so we can get, you know, 99 cent rally burgers. You know what I'm saying? So we could eat. Um, all of these guys sleeping in what's now known as the uh, historic dungeon. It was, it, it was hard, but God, was it fun. You know what I'm saying? Because we were doing something back there. We didn't know that we were changing the world. We had no idea about that. But it was it was fun because it was something that was growing and people were paying attention to. Sure, we didn't have the money to do it, but it all worked out. Tell me, uh, do you feel like a proud father when you look back and now you see the success of TLC, Outkast, and Escape? You know, with, with TLC, when I had them, they were second nature. Um, the whole process of putting that together, um, it wasn't easy, but I knew I had something magical. You know, I remember when we were doing our first set of photos and the photographer looked at me and he was like, this, I don't see this working. You know what I'm saying? You got a girl group here. And before that time, all the girl groups were wearing dresses. You know, they were in vogue. They were expose. Um, um, they were the good girls. They were all cutesy girls. And here I am putting these girls in baggy pants and overalls, you know, baseball caps. I'm like, this is going to be the future. This is what music is going to look like. And all it was for me was... I was uh, creating a female version of one of my favorite groups at the time, Belle Biff DeVoe. You know what I'm saying? So to sit back and watch your vision come to life and, and, and bloom the way it did, it, it, was, it was learning experiences, learning experiences that I wouldn't change for the world. Trial and error. Absolutely. Absolutely, because I had no real mentor. I was out here doing it on my own. I think that's why I spent so much time talking to a lot of the interns here and giving them my knowledge of, of how to make it in the business. You know, these millennials, man, they're something else. They don't want to listen to nobody. They're so privileged and, and um, entitled. entitled. Yes, thank you. They don't want to put the work in. Like I craved, well, when I was an intern, when I was doing things, like just say for the band, one of my more successful bands that I work with and the band that really helped me get to, me to where I am in the, in the business was a band called um, Princess and Starbreeze. Princess was uh, AKA Deborah Killing, played bass. He was the, the front woman for this band that was signed to MCA Records. And I became their roadie. And when I tell you, these people looked at me like I was a man from Mars because my, my credo is uh, see a need, fill a need. You know what I'm saying? Don't be uh, reactive, be proactive. You know, don't sit around and wait for somebody to tell you what to do. Create that job for yourself. And I'm sitting here, and I'm like, how is it that you're moving your own equipment? You know, so where, where are your roadies? Rock bands have roadies. You know what I'm saying? Let me put a roadie team together for you. Where are the t-shirts? You guys don't have no t-shirts? Let me go out here. And I spent my own money and got and got these ugly blue and pink Princess and Starbreeze t-shirts. You know, and I'm I'm looking at their cases for their gear. Like every band has their name on on their cases. Why don't y'all have your names on your cases? I stenciled out the name. Took some spray cane, and I did it all my own. Nobody told me to do it, but I knew it needed to be done. And they're sitting up there looking at me like, this kid is crazy. We're never going to get rid of this kid. But this kid is a godsend because if it, if it wasn't for him, this never would have got done. It's all a journey for me, and it's one that I wanted to take. You know, I, my background is varied, and I think that that's a blessing for, for within itself. I had real music. I came up with real music, whether it was Stevie Wonder, or, um, hell, Garth Brooks, you know what I'm saying? Real songwriters, you know, lyrics that meant things. I feel sorry for the kids that are out here today because it's not real. You don't understand a thing that's coming out. It's, it's, it's what I call microwavable 
music. You listen to it and poof, the next artist. You, you know more about the song than you do the artist. You know, it used to be, I turn on the radio, I knew what a Babyface record was. I knew what a Luther Vandross record was. You know what I'm saying? Because the artist was always bigger than the record. Nowadays, it's like, you hear this all the same. That, that's who? Is that Future or is that Designer? Uh, how would you categorize your career now? Now, me as, a, as an executive, as a, as a manager, I know one of my clients uh, wanted... Uh, a rapper on her record and I honestly felt like the rapper when they played it the, for me I honestly felt like the rapper was garbage like, I, what is this you know but I have to remember too that I'm not as young as these kids are you know we have completely different <laughs> ears when it comes to music so um, my thing was I had to then uh, as someone who wants to stay involved in this business I have to do what's best for my artist, so I go to social media, see how big he's blowing up on social media, his numbers, the fact that he was gonna be on this huge magazine cover, and he was just starting to bubble. So yeah, I was like, okay, yeah, let's put him on the record. Still sound like he was mumbling, but this artist was selling records. So, you you know. Realize why it works. You gotta realize, absolutely. You know, and that's the thing. I can't just go by the, my personal feelings anymore. You know, I have to pay attention to what's going on in the music today and I have to work alongside with it. I may not like it, but at the end of the day, there's the personal passion and then there's the business, you know, so I have to cater to both. And on the flip side of that, did you have a artist that was the most fun to work with, that was the most easy going? You know what? I, I thought I did, but they all change. They all fall to the dark side. I tell you, they're, they're, you know, being a, the manager, I think, is the most thankless job ever. Because no matter what it is that you do, uh, sooner or later, they're going to find some fault. Especially if you're guiding them in the right direction. Because that's when the sharks come out. That's when everybody starts paying attention because you're doing the good work. Now everybody, oh, oh, you know, and then the people talking in their ears. You know what I'm saying? And then everything starts to shift. And you're sitting there like somebody just flipped the switch and like, the hell just happened? What happened? We have been going together this long period of time without any, as long as you were under the radar, no problems. As soon as things, I, I get things to work for you, and people start to recognize, it's a whole different story. So. Yeah, that's amazing. Mm hmm So, no, there, there is, I have my joy in, 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 in this world right now is watching this 11-year-old grow. And, and seeing her passion at such a young age for what she's doing right now. She loves to act. And she's good at it. She's real good. You know, so it was a time where she came and really caught me off guard. This is one of those, I sitting up in my office, just sobbing after this because she, 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 I'm talking to her mother and she gets on the phone and she said, Mr. Burke, I, I know I play with you a lot and I tease you a lot and all like that. But I just want to let you know that I'm glad you're in my corner and I'm, I'm grateful to be working with you. And I'm just like. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's this 11 year old. One of the stories that I need to hear, crisscross. The crisscross story merges in with, uh, with TLC. And what had happened was I was building a relationship, solid relationship with JD. We go back years. JD was supposed to work on the, the Another Bad Creation project. Somehow he got taken off of that project. Somehow, I don't know what the full details were, but he wasn't part of that project. So. JD was looking for a project of his own. In the meantime, I was in the midst of constructing the girls uh, that you know, uh, TLC. And he actually saw the package that I put together, the photos, and he was like, wow, wow. So he said, listen, if you do something similar to this new project that I'm working with, I'll produce a song for your girls. And I was like, perfect. 
let's go. Took them to the same photographer. And at the time uh, we were doing it, they weren't called Criss Cross. They were called ALF, ALF, or a Little Funk. And there was three of them, it wasn't two. They had a, a little DJ guy too. So I did what I, uh, the, the thing he needed me to do for Criss Cross, and he produced the song for the girls, the song that actually gave Tion her signature lower range vocals, and she didn't want to sing like that. I sound like a guy. You know, you sound perfect. Nobody out there sounds like you, you know. So that was my whole thing with, with Criss Cross. And then I became their valet, driving them all over the town, you know, and getting them to where they needed to be in the early days. Right. Uh, you have, like I said, you have an amazing legacy, and I know it's not over yet. No. So looking forward to see the rest of it. Okay. Yeah. I'm here. Like I said thank you again. And we appreciate sitting here with you. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Any more questions? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ian Burke, and you just took a journey with me just beyond the spotlight.